Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 19, where I'm going to tell you to be careful with he, she, it, there, and many other words of this type. Why? Okay, when you look at the grammar books, and it will generally tend to be B2, C1, C2, so this is uh, what you might consider advanced English, you might come across a topic which is called substitutive forms or substitution. And this is really, really um, an overcomplicated way of talking about a simple problem, and that is how you use substitution. Now, to substitute means to use in place of or instead of and for writing English or for writing in your native language this is really important from the point of view of style. Now it's important because we don't want to write a sentence as you can see behind me which is Jim, 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 Jim. So Jim did this, Jim was there, Jim saw this, Jim did that. In terms of style, this is not good style. It's repetitive, it perhaps shows not much thought when it comes to writing, it's not very interesting to read, and if you're sending that kind of work to your client or to your university professor or to whoever, then that person who is reading it will perhaps form a negative opinion of the writing. Jim did this, Jim did this, Jim did this, Jim did this. And so that's why we use substitution, to, to vary the language, to talk about something else. So instead of saying Jim, 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 I could say Jim, he, his, the lawyer, and I could think of many different ways to think of how I could talk about Jim without saying Jim, 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 Jim. So that's what substitution is. And words like he, she, it, there are all forms of substitution. So this is simple stuff. Although this is in advanced English, really this is simple, simple level stuff. However, whilst the grammar books will tell you about substitution and why you should use it, the grammar books will not tell you about the problem with substitution. And from a legal or business English point of view, there is a huge problem with substitution. And that is when we write in a way that the substitution that we've used, the substitutive word, can mean two or more things. This problem is called an unclear antecedent or an unclear antecedent, as I call it. I'm going to show you an example in a second if you don't know what I mean. But if you want to find out more about this, go to Google, type in unclear antecedent or antecedent, and have a look at the information that you will see. And you will see that this is a huge problem. It's also important to say right now that this is definitely a native speaker writing problem. This is not generally a non-native speaker writing problem. Why? It's because native speakers in their mind when they're writing know what they're trying to say. And so that they just write, 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 write. I know what's going on. The reader will know what's going on as well. Unfortunately, the reader does not know what you know. So the reader doesn't automatically know what, what am I talking about? The reason why this doesn't happen so much for non-natives is because official documents which are sent out to clients tend to be read by a number of different people. And then ultimately it might come to someone like me who's a proofreader and I'll look at that and I'll identify the problem and I'll say, you can't say this, it's got to be something else. So this is why it tends to be much more a native speaker problem rather than a non-native speaker problem. And to show you an anecdote as well, uh, I had once um, a student of mine, a lawyer, who phoned me up and said, I don't, my English is terrible, I don't understand this, it comes from American Council. And I know that his English was really good. And when I went to his office and I read the document, I said, well, I don't understand it either because your American lawyer has made a mistake, which is this unclear antecedent. So let's find out what this problem is. 
So we've got a sentence here. Jim met Bob at the office before the conference. First sentence, not a problem. Second sentence, he was very nervous about being there. And here in this second sentence, we have got two unclear antecedents. Let me highlight them and show you. So you've got Jim and Bob. And in the second sentence, you've got he. Well, what does he refer to? Does he talk about Jim or does he talk about Bob? In English, there are no rules to say he must be the first thing or he must be the second thing. In English, he could be either Jim or Bob. So he is an unclear antecedent. There, at the end of the second sentence. Now there talks about a location, but in the first sentence there are two locations. There's office and there's conference. And if we have a look at the context of the sentence, uh, two people meeting um, at a place before a conference, and then someone being nervous about being at a location. Now, a context could exist where all possibilities are equally possible. So from the reader's point of view, the reader cannot know for certain what the writer is trying to say. So we've got two forms of substitution and we've got two problems. So how do we solve this problem? We say this. Jim met Bob at the office before the conference, and the writer chooses one of them. Jim was nervous about speaking, and then the writer gives us the location, speaking at the conference. And you can see here that I've given you more information. I've thought about the message, and I've said there's something which should be there, some information. So I've given you the information. Jim was very nervous about speaking at the conference. And this is why it's so important to review your writing. You get to see the things that, or you hopefully will identify the things that you know, but the reader might not know. And that's why unclear antecedents exist. Okay, so let's have a look at the teaching tips. Using substitution is good. Use substitution. Don't say Jim, 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 Jim. It's terrible style. But there are some problems with substitution that the course books, the grammar books, don't tell you about. Look for English grammar substitution or look in an advanced grammar book. Look on the Google to find out what the problem is. But when you're using substitution, you've got to be careful when you use those forms. And it's possible you might refer to more than one person or thing. And if you look for the problem on Google, which is unclear antecedents, that's where you'll find the problem. And as if you're hoping that a spell checker will help you out, I say here, some will find them, some won't. In my experience, spell checkers will not identify this error. Okay, so time for questions. What I'd like you to do is this. Identify the unclear antecedent or problematic substitutive word and then choose an appropriate option to fix the problem. So, as an example question, Jim met Bob at the office before the conference. He was nervous. I want you to identify the problematic word, and that word is he. Okay, and I want you to do this because I want you to get into the habit of analysing text and seeing where the word is. It's not good enough. It's not good enough just to say, there's a problem. It's for this particular problem, we have to be able to say, this is where the problem is. And then you've got the suggested answer. Jim met Bob at the office before the conference. Bob was very nervous. There is no right or wrong answer. There just is a right way of solving the problem. And that is by choosing one of the options and then rewriting it using the option to make the problem go away. So that's what I would like you to do.